Welcome, everybody. I'm delighted to introduce, to, to welcome you to tonight's Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzmut event with Liberal Judaism and Reform Judaism. My name is Graham Carpenter. I have had the great privilege of being on the board of Liberal Judaism for the last six years, although recently stepped off. And I'm also a board member for the World Union for Progressive Judaism. And I'm delighted to be co-hosting tonight with Nolene Cohen. Nolene. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our event. I am Nolene Cohen. I'm the co-chair of Eilat Synagogue, and I'm the incoming chair of the New Israel Fund. And I'm delighted to be part of this evening, put on by our movements who have worked so closely together to bring it to you. As we begin this evening and the sun sets on Yom HaZikaron, Israel's Memorial Day, we're constantly reminded of that tension between sadness and loss and that immense joy that we feel in being able to celebrate Israel. Yom HaZikaron is a time when we let the pain in and we listen to stories and internalize stories as we'll hear tonight. But it's also a moment for us to virtually, as we all do at the moment, wrap our arms around Israel and that melting pot that is culture for us, that is music and food and language and liturgy. Graham, do you want to share what we're going to talk about this evening? Absolutely. So as we all know, Israel is this amazing mosaic of, of culture and uh, experience. And tonight we're delighted to be bringing you four stories. Uh, or looking at different areas of Israeli culture. So we'll be going from poetry to language to music and also a bit of alcohol. Um, and uh, I'm very, very excited for what we have in store tonight. We have some really great speakers um, and uh, amazing rabbis. Um, and we're really gonna, I'm really excited because we're gonna also gonna be really in touch with the Israel movement for progressive Judaism uh, uh, as well. And so, um, yeah, I think that next we now have uh, a special message from uh, Minister of Knesset, Rabbi Gilad Kariv, um, who we are very, very... Dear friends and colleagues, I want to wish you all a joyous and meaningful Chag Ma'ut Israel Independence Day together with us here in Israel. Since being elected to the Knesset, I have received messages of support and encouragement from partners and friends around the world, and I want to express my sincere gratitude for your support. I will do everything in my power to be an effective voice in Israel's parliament, for the aspirations and values of liberal and reformed Judaism and progressive Zionism and see repairing and deepening relations between Israel and liberal world Jewry as a major strategic goal. As I know you are aware, in Israel we first commemorate Memorial Day, Yom HaZikaron, and then move to celebrate our independence. Yom HaZikaron is the time when we remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can live in freedom in our homeland. Then, and only then, we can make the transition to joyous celebrations of Independence Day. A message that I have always given during this very unique 48-hour period is that as people and movements, who spend most of our time striving for tikkun and improvement of our society on so many levels and naturally as a result engaged in very difficult issues that involve ongoing arguments with people and communities with our beliefs, Independence Day is the time for us briefly to suspend our critique and conflicts and reveal in memory and joy over the very fact that we have a thriving Jewish national homeland, in the fact we have a sovereign Jewish and democratic nation, and in the incredible accomplishment made in our still very young country. This is a time to remind ourselves that having an independent Jewish state is the fulfillment of a dream of generations. We are all proud and committed, progressive and reform Zionists, who love Israel unconditionally, while at the same time striving to nurture Israel as a democratic and Jewish nation. 
I ask you to continue with those two holy tasks that cannot be and should not be separated, cultivating the love of Israel and the engagement with its land, history, people, language, and culture, and at the same time working with us here to secure its values and to fulfill our vision of Chevrat Mofet, a society of justice, a beacon upon the nation. As I enter the Knesset and fulfill a long life personal dream, I do so with a profound belief that despite what we see as difficult challenges, we can, together, fulfill our collective dreams for our state and our people around the world. Chag Atzma'ut Sameach. Thank you. Toda Raba, MK, Rabbi Gilad Kariv. And it's incredible to be connected to Israel on this day through your amazing words, especially after the last year when I think at times many of us have felt so far away from, from Israel due to the restrictions of the pandemic. Um, a quick plug to say, please do let us know where you're watching from. The chat is live on all of the different accounts this is streamed on. Uh, please check in and let us know how your Yom Hatzma'ut and your Yom Hazikaron are going going and just share your thoughts and comments with us as we go through this evening. I'm delighted now to hand over to Nolene for her conversation with Rabbi Mickey Boyden. Good evening, uh, Rabbi Boyden. Ah, there you are. It's a pleasure to be with you, Nolene. Hello. I understand you are at a Yom Ha'atzmut party going on upstairs? Absolutely. They put me down in the bomb shelter so that I don't disturb anybody and they don't disturb us either. <laughs> well, as long as you've got good connection, that's brilliant. We only have a short time with Rabbi Mickey Boyden this evening, so um, I'm going to do a really short introduction. Rabbi Mickey Boyden was born in London. He was ordained at Leo Beck College and moved to Israel in 1985. I think we, you said Rabbi Boyden. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh as Yom HaZikaron draws to a close, and I know it's another difficult memorial day for you, and I spoke earlier about internalizing and listening to stories, uh, and it's a day that's difficult for you and for the family of every fallen soldier and victim of terror. I wondered if we could jump straight in and ask you to share your story with us, uh, your loss and how it has given you um, hope and memory to move forward with. We may get Aliyah, as you said, Marlene, in uh, 1985 with two children. The youngest was uh, Yonatan, uh, who was 12 when we came to Israel. He celebrated his bar mitzvah here, grew up in this country, loved this country. He enjoyed sailing, and on Yom Atzmut, he used to raise uh, a flag to the top of the mast on his sailing dinghy uh, and salute. That's how much he felt connected to this country. Um, he served in the army and was in an elite parachute regiment um, and was serving in Lebanon in the defense area that Israel had there when they were attacked by the Hezbollah after they went on a rescue mission. And uh, he was seriously wounded and died 16 days later in hospital. Um, it's always there, of course. Uh, it's not something that you forget. It accompanies you throughout your life. And uh, this day, uh, Yom Azikaron, the Memorial Day, is basically, I think, a day for Israelis to identify with us. Um, and for us, it's good to be able to share our pain with others who care about our lives and what we're doing here in Israel. When we think about loss and so many fallen soldiers and victims of terror, how do you feel you combine your individual personal loss with this collective memorial? Is it a real space? Are you able to, to share with others and with the greater Israeli public and the diaspora what it means for all of us to be able to remember and build memory to heal loss? I think people want to connect and it's particularly difficult for people who themselves have not experienced what we've experienced. Um, sometimes they distance themselves. Uh, 
I was actually speaking to a group of rabbis in Israel yesterday about this, about for some people we're turned into lepers and they distance themselves because they're nervous about the whole thing. Um, and this is an opportunity for us to share with them what it feels for us and to help them understand a little bit about the pain of loss and living the rest of your life without an important family member not being part of all of your experiences. Today I was at the cemetery, obviously, with uh, hundreds of thousands of Israelis as we stood by the graves of the fallen soldiers. And uh, standing next to me was uh, a man who is around 50 now with grown-up children. He served together with my son, Yonatan. And you ask yourself, I wonder what Yonatan would have been like at this stage in his life if he'd have carried on. But sharing our thoughts with each other and being able to express our feelings is, I think, a way of helping them also to connect with what we're going through, uh, not this day only, but every day. Absolutely. And sharing one another's stories makes it very real and brings it home to us. I know that you're involved in um, a future in you founded two communities in, in Israel, one in Renana and the other in Hod HaSharon, uh, Kehilat Yonatan. Do you want to just very briefly talk about the hope that that has given you and rebuilding in a physical and spiritual way? When you go through what we have gone through and what many other Israeli families have gone through, you have two alternatives. You either shrink and hide behind some kind of a scream or go inside your own shell or else you decide no um we're living we're going to carry on living and we're going to make the best of the lives that we have and use them to contribute to our society and so we established in hodeshawn kihilat yonatan in memory of yonatan our son and that felt very good because it was like a, a positive thing that we could do. And to see the life of our congregation and the activities in which people are involved, in a sense, gives some kind of continuity to the life of Yonatan and, and the memory of Yonatan and of the kind of person that he was. So it's very important, I think, um, to be able to take one's loss um, and one's pain and the memory and use it in a way that contributes to our society, um, and in this case, contributes towards the development of progressive Judaism in Israel. And uh, many Israelis who have suffered loss, like ourselves, do use this opportunity to reach out and do something creative. Absolutely, it's an amazing moment, and I have no doubt the way you speak about Yonatan that he would have shared your passion for establishing progressive Judaism in Israel in the way that you have. On a slightly broader level, you know, there is there is so much sadness and loss, and I think we can all feel it through even through the screen in this strange uh, world we live in. But there's hope, uh, hope for Israel and hope for the world we live in. Could you share with us some of your hope for Israel and, uh, you know, with all the beautiful things we're celebrating here tonight comes the sort of big um, wish for a, an Israel that is uh, all we, we have right now and all that we want it to be. Can you share some of your hopes with us? I'm actually very positive about what Israel can become because there are so many people in Israel that want this country to be a country that will embody the values that we believe in, uh, a country that will be democratic, that will be pluralistic, that will be open. Um, there's a lot of struggling along the way to reach that, um, but our hopes are for a better society, and we're very positive about that. Uh, just to tell you a very brief personal story, in Hodeshawn, we had to literally struggle against our former mayor and city hall in order to get land to build our own synagogue here. Um, and it took 15 years to finally get a building permit, but we didn't let go. Uh, this country exists because we never let go, and we move forward and we find a way forward. And at this point in time, God willing, having started to build a community center for our community, we will bring that to fulfillment. And that is part of the building of our society here in Israel. 
Rabbi Mickey Boyden, it has been a real pleasure speaking to you tonight, and and we really are um, honoured that you have shared your story with us in with such uh, humility and kindness. And we hope to uh, one day visit your community, to visit Kehilat Yonatan when it's a standing building, and bring our our hopes and our spirits to the building. So thank you for sharing your story, for being part of the Hope of Israel, and for being part of the Progressive Project that is being built around you and in Israel. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yom Sameach. I wish you all a happy Israel Independence Day. And Chag Sameach to you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, I'm from London. We offer words for Yom Hazikaron. Today, we turn our thoughts to the land of Israel, cradle of our faith, a land hallowed by memories of prophets and poets, mystics and sages and defenders of the land. In all the ages of our history and in all the places of our wanderings, we have remembered it with love and longing, saying with the psalmist, Im eshkachech Yerushalayim tishkach yamini, tidbak l'shoni l'chiki im lo if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. So now we're privileged to celebrate Israel's rebirth, but not before we recall with gratitude the vision of its pioneers, the devotion of its builders, and in particular tonight, the courage of its defenders. In the desolate spaces of a never forgotten homeland, they built villages and towns, planted gardens and established industries. We give thanks that out of the ashes of the death camps, there has arisen a symbol of renewal, a haven where broken lives have been made whole again, an affirmation of our people's fidelity to its past and remembering all those who laid down their lives in honor of this land, we now have confidence in its future. El male rahamim shohen bam romim iskor an Israel. May the people of Israel throughout the world remember the souls of our brothers and sisters, members of the Israel Defense Forces who fell in the wars of Israel at times of war and during the fulfillment of their duty to defend the land, including the souls of those who fought to establish the state of Israel and those who have been killed by acts of terrorism, all those who sacrificed their lives for the sanctification of God's name. With the help of God, they brought about the revival of the nation of Israel they were quicker than eagles and stronger than lions as they volunteered to assist the nation and their blood cries out from Israel's soil. The memory of their self-sacrifice and heroic deeds will never disappear from us. May their souls be bound in the bond of life and may their names be remembered by their families, their fellow citizens of Israel and the Jewish people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Rebecca Burke from the Liberal Conference of Rabbis and Cantors and Rabbi Celia Serge from the Assembly of Rabbis of, and Cantors from the Reform and Liberal Movements. Graham, what's next on the agenda tonight? So as I mentioned before, we have four uh, dives into Israeli culture and I'm delighted to uh, introduce the first one, but first, we're going to be preceding these cultural uh, um, interludes with um, uh, some, some short words from rabbis from the progressive movement in Israel. So I'm delighted to first introduce Rabbi Tamir Nir. He is the rabbi of Chachva Bakem congregation in Jerusalem. His congregation is based all around eco ecological activity and the communal garden in the neighborhood where the congregation is limited is located. 
Tamir was also a previous deputy mayor in Jerusalem. After we hear from Rabbi Tamir, we will hear some poetry from Rabbi Moshe Lavi. My name is Tamir Nir, the rabbi of Chvaba Kerem community here in Beta Kerem in Jerusalem. And that place, that community garden, is our synagogue, the Beta Knesset Shilan. That's a place we gather, that's the place we meet each other, we meet nature, we meet God. That beautiful place is without fences. In the 73 Independence Day of Israel, I uh, sending my prey from this place that we will find the balance, the right balance between our passion, our wishes to change and to fix here in Israel or all over the world. Fences, as you can see, it's open for everybody. Everybody, whoever he is, can come and join us in Kabbalah Shabbat and in, in, in other events and prayers. That's a place we uh, put the seeds with tears, but not only that, we uh, pick the, um, the, the fruit with a lot of joy. And that's a place where we, uh, to um, our understanding, or uh, that we can't fix everything, and the ability to enjoy the beautiful things that we already done and doing here in Israel, in the community in Jerusalem. Um, that's how it goes in the Jewish community. We knew not only uh, the seeds or the plants, but ourselves too, um, and the, the beautiful uh, um, culture that we have. In the 73 Independence Day of Israel, I wish and I pray for all of us to find the balance between our wishes uh, to to fix and change the world uh, as we should uh, as we should the Jewish culture uh, that's a secret of Shabbat who uh, invite us to to work six days a week and to rest in the seventh day and to enjoy whatever we have Chag Atzmaut Okay. This week, we are celebrating the revival of the Jewish people in the land of Israel and remembering those who have fallen in the wars and conflicts. We are moving from sorrow to joy, remembering the joy emerges from sorrow, and that sorrow is forever intertwined with joy. For me, at least, that ability extends to this connection with progressive Anglo Jewry, the meeting of multiculturalism that is London, and the interface discourse. When I left Leo Beck College already more than a decade ago, I knew I want to bring to Israel some of the spirit of interface meeting. In recent years, I've been going with my students, Jews, Christians, and Muslims to the JCM conference. If I hadn't experienced an iftar feast following one of these conferences, I probably could not see this girl in her moments of sorrow. We need you. We, those in Israel, need the different perspective that Jews from around the world can offer us. We need a model of mutual interaction in which not only the Israeli lecturer come with knowledge of Hebrew and Jewish culture into the British Jewish community, but also the British community offers a progressive perspective so valuable to the Israeli society. Allow me to conclude with words of hope for the possibility of reconciliation, of the meeting and cooperation between Israelis and Palestinians, the realization of which I believe is the only way we can reach true independence and freedom. In the winter, a couple of years ago, a brief bout of snow fell in the hills of Judea and Jerusalem. It was Friday night, and by the morning, like the manna in the desert, the snow had melted. When Shabbat was over, I looked for videos of the snow 
to see if it had indeed come to rest some on the ground. And all I found were video clips of young Palestinians laughing with joy in the snow in the early morning hours. And I wrote thus. שלג ירד בשבת, שלג ירד בחברון וחלחול ובית לחם, שלג ירד באפרת מגדל עוז ובשורש, שלג לבן בצח, שלג רך, שלג זך, שלג מלהיב לבבות. שלג קל הוא היה, שכבה דקה, כמעט לא היו דיווחים, שלגי הגליל הכבדים לכדו עד שעות מצלמות יהודים. כמעט ולא נודע השלג הזה, השלג שלא היה קל כצפוי, בהרי המרכז, מרכז ישראל, מרכז פלסטין, מרכז יהודה ושומרון. יוטיוב פוצע את גבולות הכיבוש. יממה ומחצה במאוחר, אני מדפדף סרטונים פלסטינים. השלג מאחד לבבות. השלג כובש את פסגות הערים. השלג לוכד את דמעות הילדים. השלג מדלג כעילות השדה. השלג שר פזמוני שבת ומרטיט רמקולי מואזין. השלג מצהיל נערים ברחבת חרם השריף. בעין יוטיוב של שבת, מהצד השני של הכותל, הלב יודע, אותו השלג הרקיד משכימי שחרית, מתפללי תפילת ותיקים. Now we can say, חג עצמאות שמח. Thank you. Welcome back, and amazing, inspiring words from both Rabbi Tamir Nir and Rabbi Moshe Lavi. Um, so, what's coming up? In a bit, I'm delighted to say that uh, we will be making some cocktails. Uh, I understand the ingredients were sent out beforehand, and they might scroll up on a banner soon. Um, uh, so, do remember to get your cocktail making ingredients ready. There they go. They're on the bottom of the screen now. Um, and uh, keep your comments coming in on social media. Um, bonus points for anyone who can guess, who can work out where this photo in my background is in Israel. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but now it is my pleasure once again to introduce our next segment. We'll be hearing from, firstly, another rabbi from the progressive movement in Israel, Rabbi Ayala Meron. Uh, rabbi Ayala Meron Chashoa is, she is a rabbi of Bevat Ayin, a congregation in Rosh Hayin in the center of Israel. And she also is a teacher in the Hebrew Union College. Um, and after we hear from Rabbi Ayala, we'll be hearing, we'll be delving into some Hebrew language with the lovely Michal Shomer. Hello everybody, my name is Ayala Miron, I'm a rabbi at Congregation Bavat Ayn in Rosh Ayn, Israel, and I want to share this uh, thought with you today about one of the greatest miracles, in my opinion, uh, of, the, of the Jewish state. Uh, I think it's the Hebrew language. I think the fact that a second or third, a third grade child can go into the in Israel Museum in Jerusalem and just open up the Dead Sea Scrolls that are dated 2,000 years ago and read from it and actually understand what it says, or at least try to understand what it says, is one of our greatest miracles. And talking about the Hebrew language, I want to relate to one of my favorite uh, novels that was written here. Uh, it's by a writer named Meir Shalev, it's called The Pigeon and a Boy. It's telling the story about this homing pigeon, a pigeon that wherever you put her, she knows one thing, she knows how to go back home. She knows where, we, where, it, where it belongs. She knows that it is the urge that she has. And my blessing for the State of Israel this year, for Yom Ma'ut, would be that we would all know where home is. Home could be not only a place, it could be a letter, a word, or a story. And I think it's for us uh, to realize that we're all telling 
in different languages, from different perspectives, the same story of the Jewish people. And we want to share it, and we want to live with it, and we want to pass it on to the next generation. Yom HaTzma'ut Sameach to all. We can't really celebrate the founding of the modern state of Israel without also thinking about the revival of the Hebrew language. Historians suggest that the revival of the Hebrew language actually began on the 13th of October, 1881, when Eliezer ben Yehuda and his friends agreed to exclusively speak Hebrew in their conversations. Ever since, Ivrit has evolved like other living languages. But it took almost another 140 years for new letters to be added to our ancient Hebrew alphabet. It is my pleasure to welcome today Michal Shomer, the creator of the multi-gendered Hebrew alphabet, to talk about this exciting new development. Most people here probably know that Hebrew is a gendered language consisting of two genders, male and female only. In English, it has become much more commonplace to avoid gendered language and our movements have for many decades used prayer books with translations that avoid talking of God only in the masculine. However, in Hebrew, due to the nature of the language, it's quite tricky to avoid choosing a gender. Maybe you can share with us a little bit in general how the discussion around gendered language plays out in Israel today and also talk a little bit about maybe some of the research. Wherever we go, we see the masculine form. Studies show that the language is very important and, and has a great impact on how we um, understand the world, how we it has an impact on our perception. So, so your project is really much greater than just a graphic design project, actually. It's really a, um, a project also about creating social change, which I think is why I find it so exciting. But, but let's talk a little bit about the work itself. Um, most people probably have not come across the multi-gendered Hebrew alphabet yet. So maybe you could tell us about how the project started and your goals with it. Uh, the project started initially as my graduation project in university. I have a bachelor's degree in visual communication design. And multi-gender Hebrew is a new set of Hebrew letters uh, facilitating multi-gender and inclusive uh, reading and writing. Multi-gender Hebrew uh, consists of uh, 12 new characters, 11 letters and one uh, Nikud sign, which I designed. and. Uh, I designed them to be uh, added to our alphabet. So I'm adding new letters to the Hebrew alphabet. And multi-gender Hebrew has two main goals. So the first goal is to make um, a woman present in the Hebrew language, because as we mentioned, the masculine form is what we see mostly uh, in Hebrew. So I wanted to make more space and make the women present here in our language. And another important goal is to form a linguistic space for non-binary uh, people, for non-binary identities, because in Hebrew, we don't have the, the word they, for example. Or, um, so, so addressing uh, someone whose identity is not binary is, uh, could be very um, struggling, very difficult in Hebrew. So how has your work been received? What's been the reaction? So there is a Facebook page for multi-gender Hebrew and a few months ago I, I published um, uh, the, the words welcome. In Hebrew it's two words, Ruchim Habaim Ruchot Habot in the multi-gender Hebrew uh, way. And I published uh, this, uh, this uh, as files for free download. And a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of people and organization have, organizations have downloaded them and used them. So, uh, for example, the municipality of Gezer, private uh, company schools, and uh, in the Knesset of Israel. And this is, this was just the first step. So about a month ago, I released a full version of multi-gender Hebrew for download. 
So it's been only a month and I've seen so many examples of people using the new letters in their personal text, in documents, in, in exams for, for kids. Some teachers started to use that. So it's really amazing and uh, exciting. People are waiting for, for a change, I think, in Hebrew. People were waiting for something because um, our language, our beautiful language that I really love, uh, has, she, the, the language puts some challenges in front of us. Our society have to, had to be able to express the, the values and core values that surround us that are important to all of us like gender equality and inclusive it, being inclusive for all people multi-gender hebrew is uh, one solution to the, um, the challenges we have in the hebrew language the most important thing for me is that we find and and that we um, utilize and use Solutions in general, it doesn't have to be multi-gender Hebrew, but we have to understand that the language is super important and it, it forms our minds and we have to um, make sure that we use any of the existing solutions or we make up some new solutions to, um, to really include everyone and, and use the language in a way that promotes gender equality. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, um, especially for giving us these exciting new letters um, so that we can realize um, a contemporary take on the Hebrew language and also participate in in the act of tikkun, <laughs> of, um, of repairing the world, of, of bringing a little bit more equality and justice into the world by using it. Um, thank you for thank being you with so us. <laughs>
The song says, מי שרעב ימצא אצלנו פת של לחם. Here, whoever is hungry will find a piece of bread. Here, whoever is tired will find shade and fresh well water. One whose sukkah has fallen may silently enter through the door and may stay forever. The very last words of the song are, V'ashar shuv lo yisager, may the gate never close again. So our wish and greeting to the state of Israel on its 73rd year is that in the spirit of the song, our gates will always be open to welcome the stranger, to welcome each and every one of you, and to make sure that everybody can get here at least tzel umay be'er, shade and fresh well water, and hopefully much more than that. Wishing you all yom atzmut sameach, and praying for better times we can, when we can actually meet in person. L'ashana ba'a b'ver sheva l'itraot. We're just taking a moment to go back and thank Rabbi Mira Hovav and, and the many uh, rabbis from the Israel movement who've been with us tonight. Rabbi Mira Hovav has spoken about music in her community, and we know that across our uh, progressive and across communities in Israel and around the world, there is music evolving and music helping us learn and connect with one another and with our communities. Rabbi Esther Ben, that music that we've just heard is very familiar to many of the people on the screen here today. Uh, there are melodies that we're singing in our synagogues in London, around the world, and particularly we know they're being sung in Beit Fila Israeli. Before we start, can I just introduce you to everyone on the screen? Uh, rabbi Esteban Gottfried is the rabbi and co-founder and director of Beit Fila Israeli. Rabbi Esteban was ordained at Hebrew Union College in Jerusalem and is a graduate of the Shalom Hartman Institute. I wondered if you could just tell us how Beit Vila Israeli came to be. Hi, Noreen, everybody. Hi to everybody. Chag Sameach. Um, and thank you for having us, uh, having me here in this conversation. Beit Vila uh, Israeli, it's, it, it was a need. It came from a need especially from a personal need for me and the other small group of people that, that we got together and, and we said that, that something was missing. We started as a Chabura, as a, we were like 20 people and very, very um, fast became something that, that uh, uh, people hear about this and, and hear that something new is happening in Tel Aviv. We did the first Kabbalah at the port of Tel Aviv with the Mediterranean, in the sunset, in a, a beautiful, beautiful, place. So since then, every summer, we do our Shabbat services at the port of Tel Aviv with uh, between 800 and 1,000 people every Shabbat. An amazing story. And, and out of that, you've created this fusion of uh, contemporary Israeli culture and Jewish tradition, and you've brought it into the public sphere. Can you talk a little bit about the diff you know, what the impact of that has been on a liberal, progressive Jewish uh, liturgy and a Jew that kind of different identity for Israelis. So that's what we do. That's our Judaism. That's our way to, to celebrate Shabbat and holidays. And it's okay to do it in the most uh, beautiful and central place of, of uh, Tel Aviv. I don't see if, if you can see that, but for every uh, page with traditional prayer, we have uh, Israeli contemporary or, or uh, not only Israeli, 
uh, poetry and songs that uh, that uh, say that are in dialogue with the tradition. And this concept of, of, of bringing Israeli poetry, Israeli songs, uh, Israeli classics, uh, and make them holy, make them uh, part of the uh, of the Israeli of our liturgy. It's also a, a um, kind of a, a revolutionary step that we did here. This music that I hear in the radio, and this text that I heard at home of, of my with my grandpa, and and everything put together, it's like I'm welcome. I, I have a place here. But the music here serves the meaning, the, the purpose of having a meaningful tefillah. A, a good way to uh, to present Beit Fila, where uh, the spirituality and religion and art are uh, work, working together. is an incredible way for Israelis to deepen their Jewish identity. And I think uh, as when it started, it feels like it was uh, an outlier. And today it's become the norm. And that is really incredible. And we, we're grateful to you for that. Uh, one of the clips we, we looked at was how you have taken that, that little step further and added a blues twist to our Seh Shalom. What was the inspiration for that? I, I, I must say that I, I heard it in, in some place and I didn't remember where. And I said, that's, that's beautiful. And, and then we, we, I, I brought what I remember by, uh, by heart to the musicians and they just bring it up. And, uh, and then we saw that it's, it comes from, uh, from the film um, Mo Matters Blue. You know, the, the, from the beginning, our motto was uh, we'll do and, and then we ask the questions. So we try many things. And when we, we try things and you feel that it, it works for you and for, for the people who are uh, doing it, that's, that's the only thing that matters. And that, that, that's how we got to this uh, 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 Shalom. And, uh, and, and have a nice fatai tiftah. That is wonderful. And we know innovation comes from experimentation, trying things yeah. and, and communities who do that are communities who innovate. And you have certainly led the way in innovation in Israel. Knowing that today we are celebrating Yom Atzmaut, uh, Israel's 73rd anniversary or birthday. So as Israel goes into its 74th year, what are your hopes for Israel? It's, 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 uh, it's being uh, uh, inclusive and it's being uh, uh, accepting and tolerant and, 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 and handing the, the hand to, to other uh, non-Jews and, and, and the, the minorities that they live here. Uh, and I think that this fight of what, what will be the future of Israel Judaism, it's the most important fight of Israel today. Thank you, Rabbi Esteban, for being part of that project to build a better Israel for everyone. You know, democracy, inclusion, these are the values that you bring to your Judaism. So please continue with Beit Tefillah Israeli to innovate and to be intentional and to be Jewish in a public space. Thank you so much. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank Chag you. My pleasure. To you. Chag Sameach. Aha, my co-host is back and welcome Graham. And that was just a little bit of music to get everybody in the mood for our concerts, which will start probably just at eight o'clock. Graham, I know you spoke to the people from Milk and Honey about whiskey and their distillery. You want to 
tell us a little bit about it. I bought my whiskey too. I'm not normally a whiskey drinker, but here I am. So um, this definitely is a Lachaya moment. Um, we want to thank everybody for coming. It's amazing to see all the comments uh, uh, in on, on all the different streams from all the people who are watching this um, all over Israel, all over the UK, and even some other places in the world, um, and across both the liberal and reform movements. It's really, really great. Congratulations to Hilary Peer and, uh, of course, Rabbi Leah Mulstein, who correctly guessed my picture is uh, Kikar Rabin in Tel Aviv. Uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, so I have had the privilege last week of chatting to uh, the Milk and Honey Distillery, which is... Uh, the only, I think it's the only um, whiskey distillery that is actually brewing whiskey on the ground in Israel. Um, I had this mystical vision that it was up in the hills of Galilee using the water from the Canary, but it's actually in the middle of Tel Aviv. Um, we're going to hear more <laughs> all about that. Um, but uh, Nolene, what, uh, what's, what, what, do you know what whiskey you're drinking? I'm drinking a Belveni, and my husband and my son won't be happy with me, but it tastes all right for a non-whiskey <laughs> drinker. I think it's okay. I think we just need to check that everybody has their cocktail ingredients ready because you've got to join in and make a cocktail and let us know in the chat how it tastes, whatever whiskey you're using. Absolutely. So really excited for this conversation with Milk and Honey. But first, we're going to hear from our final rabbi from the progressive movement in Israel, um, so I'm delighted to um, uh, introduce uh, Rabbi Yaya Tobias. Uh, um, uh, he is the rabbi of the in the Kinneret region and um, of all the kibbutzim in that area. He was uh, raised on uh, kibbutz Yehel, and uh, I'm delighted to hear from him now. Graham, can I just? My name is Yaya Tobias. I'm rabbi of Kehilat Yama, a Jewish initiative in Sovev Kinneret area. I would like to share a thought about wine. How awesome is wine? Wine is the greatest uh, drink um, that I could think of. And it's uh, in the, the sages say that wine brings out joy. But wine is also what we do when we want to elevate an, a moment. And, and in that sense, drinking wine is all about taking a moment in time and elevating it and making it a celebration. So as we celebrate the state of Israel and we celebrate our um, joint efforts to make this place a better place, let us um, raise a glass of wine and drink it for the elevation of this moment and the elevation of this celebration and the elevation of this uh, country and people of Israel. May we, may we, may we, may we make this a uh, better place for all of us and for the future. Lots of love to everyone and Yom Atzmaut Sameach. Hi, Tal. Uh, Hello, and, uh, Welcome, viewers, to the M&H Distillery in Tel Aviv. Um, we're really excited to, to meet Tal today. And um, yeah, Tal, my first question for you is, what is M&H? M&H, first of all, uh, stands for milk and honey because we are from the land of milk and honey. Uh, but uh, for, for a whiskey brand, it's not the best name sometimes because it's two food ingredients, which you're talking about another food ingredient. So we, we decided to go with M&H. Uh, so yeah, we are a single malt distillery situated in Tel Aviv, in the uh, southern part of Tel Aviv, between Tel Aviv and Jaffa. And uh, it's the story actually began in 2012 from uh, a group of, of uh, friends, uh, entrepreneurs that came from the, from the high tech, but fell in love with whiskey because it's something you can actually hold in your hand and not only write it, um, and they just fell in love with whiskey and decided to be uh, the, the pioneers and to open the first ever uh, single malt whiskey distillery here in Tel Aviv. So tell us about the whiskey. So what's the, what products have, has so, m &H come up with? So we are making only single malt, so we are distilling only barley, malted barley that stands for, for the single malt. 
Uh, we source the barley from uh, from the UK because our country, as you know, it's too hot, and our barley is is not good enough. It's not doesn't have enough starch or sugars in it, and more fibers fibers inside. When we put it in in our casks, uh, unlike the, the distilleries in Scotland, which they say their whiskey is resting or the whiskey the casks are sleeping, this is the Middle East. No one's sleeping, you know. And then, of course, in Tel Aviv. So the casks are working because of the climate. So we need a very high, very clean uh, new make. Uh, and the casks are actually working here in this kind of climate, the hot and humid climate of Tel Aviv. So it's, it's a very fast maturation comparing to cold countries. Uh, mm -hmm. For us, in three years, you're going to get a very, very, get a very no mature whiskey. No mature Both whiskey. of the casks we, have, the here cask we have here are ex-bourbon. We're using a second fill or, or a first fill after it was a bourbon cask. Uh, white oak from from uh, Kentucky. Tell us a bit more about how the whiskey tastes. Like, how would you describe your your whiskey? So, I think if, if we're talking about the classic, which is our yeah. uh, our opening uh, uh, version, our opening expression, uh, it's mostly ex bourbon cask and then some uh, red wine cask and a drop of virgin oak, a, a new oak. Because here in our climate, virgin oak tend to be over oaky. Um, yeah. And the whiskey is very. First of all, it's kind of oily, oily texture the upper part of your palate and then very uh, sweet and gentle vanilla, uh, some nutty and some fruitiness from, from the wine mm -hmm. cask. And this combination, uh, it's around three and a half years old. And from time to time, we're going to have some crazy, crazy expressions like the pomegranate wine cask or some cask we are actually aging at the Dead Sea, which is the lowest cool. place in the world. And we, we are the only one that can actually do it. I, I can't wait to try some. I only wish there wasn't a... A pandemic that meant I was actually in the room with you and able to sample sample the whiskeys. Uh, we, and in Israel, it's, it's over. In Israel, it's over. It's. Uh, I know. I know. Uh, why? Why Tel Aviv? Why is MNH based in Tel Aviv? But then also, you know, why does what what does it say that Israel now has its own whiskey, right? Yom Hatzmut. What's Israeli about this? First of all, I think the whole idea is Israeli because it's it's. I think it was impossible to open a whiskey distillery in Israel. But if you tell an Israel, if you want an Israeli to do something, you have to tell him it's impossible. And the second thing I think it's our innovation. So we are playing by the Scottish regulations. We double distill distillation, double distillation of modern barley. But I think if you add our you know hectic way of thinking, uh, the Israeli hectic way of thinking, so this is where you get uh, all kinds of crazy ideas like uh, the Dead Sea or uh, Jerusalem mountains or or stuff like that. Perfect. The second thing is is why Tel Aviv. If you're from Tel Aviv, this is the capital. <laughs> you're from Jerusalem, it's a, it's a different kind of thing. Uh, everything happens here, you know that. Uh, Tel Aviv is the is the most liberal city, uh, night scene, a bar life, and everything here. And I think most of the tourists first come come here and then, of course, they go to Jerusalem. Uh, and I think we are from Tel Aviv. And if you think very fast, if you think uh, outside the box, you're Tel Avivian. And I think even the name Tel Aviv, it's something that resembles our way of thinking. Traditional way of, um, of whiskey making with very new ideas. Absolutely. And the, 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 the word whiskey, I think, comes from the Gaelic for yep. water of water life. Of life. Yep. Right? So like, Chaim, Mayim, there's some amazing play on words here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Tel Aviv, Chaim, Mayim, yeah. maybe, you know, a, a, another whiskey of yours in the future can, can, can own that. And finally, how do you recommend drinking the whiskey? Uh, so for me, just like that. Uh, Perfect. The, me it, too. For me, the, be the best cocktail is two ingredients. One of them is a glass. But uh, <laughs> if we're going to make a cocktail, so let's do a um, whiskey sour with a little twist. So we start with one and a half ounce or 45 milliliters of our classic M&H single malt whiskey. And... A sweet and sour. Sweet and sour, it's the same ratios between simple syrup, which is uh, sugar water, and lemon juice. The same, 45. And then I'm taking a few thyme branches, just crush them a little bit and put them in. Ice. And just Shake it a little bit. Come on, I'm gonna strain it into a whiskey glass, an old-fashioned glass.
but it's still hard. I'm going to add some more ice in it. Another fresh thyme and a slice of lemon, and we are ready to go. Lechaim. Cheers. Lechaim. Thank you, Tal. Hi, everyone. I'm Cantor Tamara Wolfson. This is Rabbi Anna Posner. Hello. And having celebrated 74 years of Israeli innovation and beauty, uh, we invite you to stand with us and to sing the Hatikva, the Israeli national anthem, with us at this time. <laughs> by Anna Posner. The sun has set here in London and I know it's been set for a while in Israel. So our program has come to an end, but it's, we are running slightly over, but we are never running too late to say some really important thank yous. So I just want to thank first and foremost, our colleagues in the reform and liberal movements for working so brilliantly together to put tonight's program on rabbis, professionals and lay people. It's been really fantastic. I also wanted to thank Rabbi Mickey Boyden for sharing his really incredible story with us and all his hope, and to everyone else who shared their stories in those vignettes this evening. Also to the rabbis from the Israeli Movement for Progressive Judaism, it was wonderful to meet rabbis from more remote communities who are doing such incredible work in Israel, building our progressive movement. I also wanted to thank the tech team who have kept us on track took Graham out, brought him back in again, but they've been really brilliant tonight and it takes a huge amount of work to do this and I'm really uh, cognizant now of just how much, so thank you very much to them. And to the rabbis and cantors or to the cantors and musicians and rabbis who are going to be doing the song session, the kumsit in a few minutes and the Zoom link has come through, a pre-thank you to them and join in with them and celebrate and celebrate all that is uh, our movement and our music and Israel in, on her 73rd birthday. Graham. And I have the absolute privilege of thanking uh, Minister for Knesset, Rabbi Gilad Kariv. We wish you in all your work uh, in the new government and uh, thanking all of the liberal and, and reform movements um, uh, partner organizations in work of all sorts in Israel. Um, we are thinking of you at this time and uh, also thanking everyone for watching tonight, wherever you are in the UK, in Israel and around the world. And finally, thanking Nolene, my co-host. Um, Yom Hatzimut Sameach, Tadaraba, everybody, and uh, wishing you a lovely evening. Thank you, Graham. Chag Sameach, everyone.